plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. In theory, they seem to be the perfect answer for those who aren't quite ready to commit to a pure electric. A little battery that allows pure electric running for all those small journeys, an engine for the longer stuff. No range anxiety, no real change in behaviour, no fuss. But also the perfect way to glimpse what electric life might be like. Of course, those people that are already into EVs tend to think they're the absolute worst of both worlds, mainly because you don't really get much EV running and yet you're still dragging around a heavy, complicated and polluting internal combustion engine, all because you want to work the system and avoid paying inconvenient tax. But there are people for whom going fully electric is just that bit too much of a jump, people who can't afford the pure electric car that actually suits their needs. They're just trying to do the best they can with the hand that they've been dealt. This is going to cause an internet argument. Sorry, not sorry. Take this Mitsubishi Outlander, for example. It's quite clever, really. Mitsubishi was way over the curve when it came to plug-in hybrid tech and brought us this car, which offered a 4x4 SUV with petrol and just a little dash of electric. It made sense as a family car, could do a few miles just on electric power and, crucially, could save a fortune for company car drivers in benefit and kind tax. That part is relevant, I promise. Mainly because, as a result, there have been more than 52,000 sold in the UK. It's been a massive success. Now Mitsubishi has since decided that with the Outlander getting on a bit and a raft of much sexier PHEVs arriving, that it's not going to sell them anymore. But that still means there are 52,000 potential used Outlanders out there. And they make a great used buy, with prices starting at just over seven grand. For a decent family vehicle that can fit everyone and tow a caravan, yet manage all those little journeys on electric, that's not bad. So a FEV kind of makes interim sense for getting used to plugging in a little bit. If you do journeys of less than 20 miles a day, you can do that on pure electric, and then when you need to go and visit your gran at Christmas or go on holiday, you've got that petrol engine as a backup. And that's a good thing, because it might actually just tempt some people away from a big, cheap petrol or diesel engine, especially because there are quite a few second-hand FEVs starting to pop up now. So what do we need to watch out for? Well. All a PHEV really is, is a car that has an internal combustion engine, but also a relatively small battery and an electric motor. Most of the older ones can manage between 20 and 30 miles of pure electric range in ideal conditions, meaning that you do smaller commutes and trips, mostly on pure electric alone. But like we said, when you need it, there's an engine in there as well. As far as it being an actual car, look out for all the usual stuff, body damage, curbed wheels, different color paint. Make sure all the electrical stuff works, check that service history. Remember, as far as most of the mechanicals go, this has an engine just like a normal car, so it will have needed servicing. But most of these PHEVs will have been bought as company cars as the drivers wanted to make the most of those tax advantages. That means they should have been well maintained, but yeah, still check the service records. Problems? Well, several plug-in hybrid electric vehicles have had slight problems with overheating batteries, so make sure all of the remedial work has been carried out by the proper people. Dave down the pub doing fixes probably won't cut it, because it's high voltage electricity. Sorry Dave. Whichever model you go for though, they have proven to be generally pretty reliable. There have been some issues with braking systems that again should have been dealt with under warranty and many of these kinds of cars came with a decent three to five year cover, with batteries generally getting eight years, so the majority of the early cars are still actually covered. That said, taking this Outlander as an example again, can you guess how many batteries Mitsubishi has had to replace under warranty? None, which would suggest it's not something that's going to keep you up at night. One thing to think about though is the problem with a lot of these early plug-in hybrid electric vehicles is that people just didn't plug them in at all. And that means the actual MPG and CO2 figures were three to four times that of the official prediction and that's not very good. It also makes perfect sense that a lot of people into pure electric cars get very angry about it. But on the second hand market that also has a slightly weird effect because the batteries that are in these cars haven't been through as many duty cycles as they might have, so you're essentially buying a low miles electrical system. Now that's good. And of course, if you were buying one, you'd be plugging it in as much as humanly possible, right? Right, good. 
Other stuff that it's handy to sort, well, when you're buying one of these cars, try and make sure that it comes with all the appropriate charging cables. A three pin granny charger, like this one, it comes with a little extra box on the cable, can cost upwards of 500 pounds to replace. And usually the cars that you're buying should have been supplied with one of these and manufacturers tend to hide them in the boot recess just under the boot floor. Now, usually a FEV will charge in about six hours on a three pin plug, but most owners would upgrade to a home wall box and that generally tends to knock a couple of hours off that time, depending on the size of the battery that's in your particular FEV. And also, don't forget to check how much it will cost you in road tax. Again, taking the Mitsubishi as an example, Outlanders, which cost more than £40,000 new and were registered after April 2017, have to pay £325 per year in road tax until they're six years old. This only applies to the poshest versions though. All of the lesser models sneaked in under the price threshold. And that's true of a lot of pre-loved PHEVs, so you have to do your homework. Are FEVs really electric cars? Well, yes and no. They're essentially normal cars that allow for a little bit of electric running, but the more you plug them in, the cheaper and more efficient that they become. And anything that makes it just a little bit cleaner for the environment has got to be a good thing, right? Plus, it might just get someone that little bit more used to plugging in, which means they go full electric for their next choice. Also, because there actually is a burgeoning second-hand market for plug-in hybrids, you might be able to get that car that covers all of the bases that is that little bit greener than a purely petrol or diesel car. And I actually think that probably is a best case scenario. And if you believe that this statement that you can read in front of me is absolute codswallop, then please do leave a comment in the comment section because I do read them all and it makes me laugh. If you want any more advice on buying and running a new or used electric or hybrid car, be sure to head over to electrifying.com and please like and subscribe because that gives us a sense of worth and also pays the bills.